Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be building a sheath for the Full Tang Hunter knife kit. Now we built that in a previous video, so if you missed it, just click the link here and it will take you directly to it. If you did get a chance to build it already though, now is your chance to build the sheath for it. This sheath is going to be using a large tech lock and we did it using the Piranha Z pattern in desert tan. This is a really cool looking pattern. And if you don't like this particular color, we offer it in a dozen different colors. So you can always pick whatever color you want. At any rate, enjoy. And if you get the chance, just build it right along with us. All right, we have a beautiful knife here. So uh, one thing we want to be sure and do is work with a nice clean surface. Uh, and we want to be careful. We just don't want to damage it. We don't want to drop. We don't want to damage the handle. We don't want to damage the guards. We're going to go ahead and tape the blade. Um, oddly enough, uh, you might think that's to prevent any damage on the blade or prevent you from cutting yourself, but that's not the primary purpose here. Uh, the primary purpose of taping the blade when we are making a sheath is because a lot of times a knife sheath is held in just by friction, just by squeezing around the blade. Um, and because that's the case, you need just a little bit of space between the sheath and the blade. So uh, I would ballpark couldn't tell you exactly. I haven't actually uh, checked the thickness of the tape, but a couple of pieces of blue tape is going to give you probably a couple of thousandths of space. Uh, that will make it so that you can keep the blade tight in your sheath so that it doesn't fall out, but it's also uh, comfortable enough for you to pull it out and put it back in. So what we're doing, uh, unlike when you're making a kit and you're using tape to just protect yourself and the blade, uh, at that point you don't care. Uh, if it's got some bubbles, in this case we want this tape to be perfectly smooth. We want to make sure that it's on there good and snug, that there's no parts kind of sticking out or hanging over because those will have an effect when you mold your kydex around. So now we're going to take our Kydex here. As we discussed before, this is Piranha Z on Desert Tan. Just a cool pattern. Something fun. This would really be a cool pattern if you're doing a fishing knife. And all we're going to do, this part is not an exact science. We're just going to lay the blade on there. Kind of get an idea of how much plastic we want around it to work with. And then we're just going to mark it. If this is your first time making a knife sheath, I do recommend that you give yourself a little bit more space so you might mark it a little further from the blade. If you've been doing it a while, then obviously you have a better idea of just how much you need and you can uh, score and break it a little closer to the blade. Just remember, just like anything else, this is a measure twice, cut once, so you're always better giving yourself a little bit more plastic than what you think you may need. That way, if you do make a mistake, sometimes you might have enough plastic left that you can save it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring our knife over to our press so that we're ready to wrap it in plastic and put it in the press. We're going to go and take our plastic and put it in our oven here. And as you can see, we have an elapsed time. Um, a lot of different people think different things as far as heating the plastic. Somewhere between 3 and 350 is generally good for 080 thickness kydex. Um, one way that you can tell is if you were to just let it kind of hang off the front of that rack, it would start drooping down. But the big thing is you can see it's the technical term that I'm calling it is floppy. Uh, it's not kind of stiff when you're trying to wrap it around the blade. If you just held it in your hand, it would kind of flop over. That's a pretty good indication that it's ready. Uh, if you see the plastic curling up when you're heating it, that's not hot enough yet. You got to let it keep going until that curl drops back down. So we're just going to have it into our press here. We're going to let it cool down. You can let it cool down probably eight to 10 minutes will be enough. For today's project, we're using a large tech lock made by Blade Tech. Now, this tech lock has 
two locking mechanisms to make it more secure. It has the squeeze tabs, and when it's closed shut, it also has a flip lock. So it's a double lock that prevents it from opening up. Despite its size, it's used for multiple size belts. So it has two little adjusters that you can remove and put in various notches to give you all the way up to two and a quarter inch belt sizing and all the way down to three quarter inch belt sizing should you desire. Now in addition, if this one's too big for your project, maybe you're doing a smaller knife or something like that, uh, they also come in a small size tech lock. So you can always get that. All you gotta do is click the link right here and it will take you to our tech locks as well as a lot of our other attachments. You just want it to be a little bit cooler to the touch so that your Kydex doesn't lose its shape. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna mark it. So the first thing is we're gonna mark it uh, for where we want our tech lock. So I get an idea of how we want it to set on there. And since we're using a large tech lock, it's gonna go ahead definitely and cover your blade and get close to that edge of the sheath. So as we're marking where we want to cut our plastic away, we want to make sure that we got plenty of room. What we don't want to wind up with is that tech lock, tech lock hanging off the other side. So now we're just going to use our tech lock as our marking guide here. And you don't have to use it for this part. You can use it as a marking guide just for where you're gonna put your tech lock. And then if you just want a free hand because you wanna have them closer spaced together or anything like that, uh, as far as where your eyelets are going, you most certainly can. In this case, we just wanted to keep them roughly equidistance apart. So now we're just gonna trim our excess plastic and we're trimming to the outside of that line. Notice that we did take our blade out for this part, uh, and the reason we went ahead and took the knife out for that is uh, while we're cutting one, if we happen to slip, we don't want that blade to hit our knife plate. Um, and then as you can see on the back, we can go ahead and cut all the way through the top for where we want that knife to go in. So now we have our rough shape, and we've also left ourselves plenty of room to grind down. The reason that we didn't cut closer where you want the eyelets to be is because you also want to make sure that your eyelets don't hang over. So we're just going to drill our holes in here. And using a good Kydex drill bit like this makes it so easy. A regular drill is going to want to hop all over that plastic, but we have a super sharp point on our Kydex drills. They are specifically designed for this, so they make it go through just like a hot knife through butter. So at this point, we, we don't have this on film, but you could take a, a blower or something and kind of blow out the inside. You could even open it up a little bit, just clean out the inside any excess plastic, and then bring it on over uh, after it's dry and put your eyelets in. So the bottom side there is the factory rolled side of your eyelet. That's the side that you're going to want facing the outside because the factory roll is done by a machine and it's just perfect. Now we're going to go over our sander grinder and get more of our final shape. Uh, use very light pressure when you do this. Uh, it is You can run right through that Kydex really easy if you put too much pressure on it. So it looks like we're going fast, but if you'll notice we're at two and a half speed, we're really not working that fast. So all we're doing here is, like I said, light pressure. And make sure that you don't get too close and uh, end up hitting those eyelets. 
How far away you stay from the islets is completely up to you. Then we're just going to take it over and kind of get our burrs off that were made by sanding and polish it up. Once we're done with this part, it's another good time to just get you uh, a uh, small, if you've got a compressor with a little blower tip, you can use that. Even if you don't have a compressor, that's okay. Uh, you can get the same kind of compressed air that you use to clean your keyboard or your computer with. It's got that little straw and that'd be perfect. Just make sure it's facing away from your face. Uh, and you just hit that and it'll blow some of that excess dust out. Because even just on the sanding, even though we cleaned it out on the sanding and the polishing part here, uh, you can still get a little bit of Kydex dust down in that sheath. And the more of that that you can get rid of, the, rid of, the better off you are. And then we're just going to polish it to our liking. Some people just like it to feel nice and smooth, and that's fine. Uh, some people like to have a mirror finish, and that is also fine. It's completely up to you. This is your sheath. You finish it the way that you want it. attach our tech lock to our sheath. did is we just put our post in and put our washers on the other side that kind of holds those posts in place so they don't fall out. And in this case, uh, we're using flathead screws with finishing washers. And these screws don't have to be super tight, they just need to be snug. Uh, once you confirm that you've got uh, everything where you want it, uh, then what I would do is take those screws out, wipe them down, and then put some Vibrotite on them, just so that they don't come loose later. But again, as you can see, there's not a lot of torque on these. Just tighten them down snug. we go. In this case, because we have a finger guard, you should feel uh, and hear a click when you put that knife in. As I said, some blades you won't get that. They'll just be smooth and you won't get that click, but that finger guard will give you a nice click. How about that? Now we have a full tang hunter knife kit and we have a sheath for it. And listen to this. That thing clips right in. It's not falling out for anything. Certainly hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please take the time to click like and also leave any comments. Let us know of any future videos that you'd like to see. Also, if you want to make this sheath for yourself, and you didn't get a chance to do it yet, you can see the full selection of Piranha Z right here at this link. And it will also take you to the tech locks, everything that you need to build this sheet. Also, if you would, take the time to subscribe to our channel. And be sure and click the bell notification. That way you'll know every time we come out with a new project for you to do. Thanks again for stopping by, and I hope to see you soon.